Gigantic question. Gigantic question. Can AI actually solve science? Yeah, it's everywhere you look these days. It really is. But is it hype? Is it real? What's going on? Ugh. We're taking a deep dive into excerpts from Stephen Wolfram's article. Can AI solve science? Catchy title. Right. He gets straight to the point in this article. Yeah, he really does. And he doesn't mince words, this guy. Yeah. He jumps right into why AI might not be the science-solving magic bullet some are claiming. It's refreshing, actually. Like, he yeah. tackles this idea of computational irreducibility head-on. Okay. Which is crucial to understanding the inherent limitations AI faces when we're talking about something as massive as, well, the universe. Computational irreducibility. Definitely not a phrase you hear every day. Right. So... Break it down for us. What's the deal with that? So think of it like this. Wolfram uses the example of trying to predict the weather. Okay. Even with incredibly powerful computers and sophisticated models, we can't get a perfect prediction for weeks in advance. Why is that? Why? Because the weather is a chaotic system. Oh, yeah. Tiny changes in initial conditions can snowball into huge variations down the line. There's no shortcut to knowing the outcome other than letting the weather or any complex system play out. So no weather app is going to tell me if I need a raincoat a month from now. Precisely. Right. And that unpredictability, yeah. that need to let the system run its course to see the results, that's a key aspect of computational irreducibility. It means you can't just plug in some numbers and have AI magically spit out the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Kind of a bummer, but also kind of cool, right? I mean, yeah. It means we don't have some algorithm telling us everything. Exactly. I mean, there's still room for discovery, you know. Absolutely. But then where does AI fit into scientific discovery if it can't just solve everything? Yeah, that's a good question. So Wolfram's not saying AI is useless, not at all. Within this vast, irreducible universe, there are pockets of what he calls reducible phenomena. Think of them like little areas of order within the larger chaos. Okay. These are the areas where AI can really shine. Like take protein folding. Yes. I was going to say, no, you're going to ask about that. I was really curious about that because I'd heard about AI being used for that, but I wasn't sure how it worked. Well, protein folding, while incredibly complex, has patterns and rules that govern how these molecules contort into specific shapes. Right. What's amazing is that AI can analyze a massive amount of data, like the structures of known proteins, and use that to predict how a new protein will fold. Wow. It's like AI has become a master origami folder, figuring out the intricate folds just by studying examples. So AI is like a protein origami master. Exactly. Like that. Yeah. But even if AI excels at these specific tasks, how do we know it's not just finding spurious correlations in the data? That's a good question. Like what's to stop it from seeing patterns where none really exist? That's where careful training and data selection come in. Oh. Yeah. Wolfram stresses that it's not enough to just throw data at an AI and hope for the best. We need to be smart about what we feed it. Right. If you train an AI on a data set that's biased or incomplete, the results will reflect that. Yeah. Okay. So it's like expecting someone to write a symphony after only listening to polka music. Right. So it's like we're giving AI a crash course in music theory. Exactly. Not just letting it loose on, you know, a Spotify playlist. Right. Got to give it the good stuff. Yeah, curate that data. Exactly. But even if we're careful with the data, how does AI know what's actually meaningful on all that information? That's where things get really interesting. Wolfram digs into this idea of AI as a pattern detective, what which I love. I like it. He uses the example of those dimension-reduced feature space plots. Have you ever seen those visualizations? I think so, yeah. They kind of look like constellations or something, right? Exactly. Wolfram talks about how these plots essentially take complex data and flatten it into more digestible visual form. Okay. So imagine taking something like the properties of different chemical elements yeah. and plotting them onto this graph. Yeah. What's wild is that AI can analyze these plots and start to cluster similar elements together, almost like it's rediscovering the periodic table on its own. Whoa, no way. Just by finding patterns in the data, it can figure out these fundamental scientific classifications. Yeah, it's pretty wild. That's amazing and kind of creepy at the same time. Right. Like, how much can we trust what it's seeing? You're hitting on a crucial point. Just because AI can find patterns doesn't mean those patterns are always meaningful or accurate. Right. Um, it's easy for AI to get sidetracked by spurious correlations or overfit the data it's seen. Okay, that makes me think of those AI-generated images that are everywhere now. Yeah. Like, some of them are incredibly realistic and creative, no but others are just bizarre. Like a yeah. mashup of 
things that don't quite go together. Exactly. And Wolfram argues that in science, those mashups can be even more misleading. Okay. True breakthroughs often come from developing entirely new concepts, new ways of looking at the world. Right. And right now, AI is still fundamentally limited by the data we feed it, by the frameworks we've already established. Yeah. It's like asking an AI to invent a new color. Yeah. It can only work with the colors it already knows. So how do we get AI to think outside the palette, yeah. so to speak? How do we push it beyond just recognizing patterns to actually coming up with novel ideas? That's the million dollar question. And it gets to the heart of what Wolfram calls multi-computation. Using AI, not just to find a single solution, but to explore a whole range of possibilities. Multi-computation, that sounds intense. It is, think of it like this. Imagine you're trying to find the shortest route through a city right. with lots of winding streets and one-way roads. Right. Instead of just calculating a single path, multi-computation would be like exploring multiple routes simultaneously. Okay. Comparing them yeah. and figuring out which one is the most efficient. Okay, I'm starting to see how that would be useful in science. Like instead of just testing one hypothesis, you could use AI to explore multiple avenues of research at the same time. Precisely. Wow. And Wolfram gives some really cool examples of how this is already being used. Okay. For instance, in drug discovery, AI can be used to explore vast libraries of molecules to find potential candidates for new medications. Oh, wow. It's like having an army of researchers, each testing a different compound, but all working in concert. So it's not just about speed, but also about being able to explore a wider range of options than humans could on their own. Exactly. And that's where the real power of multi-computation lies. Okay. It allows us to tackle problems that were previously intractable because of their sheer complexity. Right. But of course, there's catch. There's always a catch. There's always there? a catch. So what's the limit this time? Well, even with multi-computation, we run up against that pesky problem of irreducibility. Right, right. Wolfram calls it multi-computational irreducibility where even exploring multiple paths might not be enough to find a solution if the system is just too complex, too chaotic. Okay. It's like trying to predict every ripple in a pond after you throw a handful of pebbles in. Okay, so multi-computation might be a powerful tool, but it's not a get-out-of-jail-free card when it comes to the inherent unpredictability of the universe. Right. Like, we're starting to see a theme here. We are, and it brings us to another fascinating question Wolfram raises. Can AI determine what's actually interesting in science? Mm. Can it understand those aha moments that drive true scientific breakthroughs? That's a great question. We've talked about how AI can find patterns and explore possibilities. Yeah. But can it grasp the more subjective side of scientific discovery? It's a question that really gets to the heart of what makes science so compelling. Right. And we'll dive into that right yeah, after. Right back. Yep. Okay, so we're back, and uh, we're talking about this idea of interestingness in science, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just about finding any old pattern. Right. It's about finding something that makes us go, whoa, yeah. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. Like, can AI have those light bulb moments? Right. That's the big question, isn't it? And uh, Wolfram uses the example of how certain mathematical theorems are considered more interesting than others. Okay. Even if they're all logically sound. Right. It often boils down to, you know, things like elegance, okay. surprise, yeah. connections to other areas of mathematics, things yeah. that are inherently subjective. Like that feeling you get when you listen to a piece of music that just clicks. Exactly. It's not just the notes, it's how they come together to create something that, you know, resonates with you emotionally. Yeah. And while AI can analyze things like musical patterns uh, yeah. or mathematical structures, can it truly grasp that deeper level of meaning, that sense of aesthetic pleasure or intellectual satisfaction that drives human curiosity? It makes you wonder if AI could ever be truly surprised by something it discovers. That's a good question. Like, could it stumble upon a scientific breakthrough and actually realize its significance? Or would it just be like, oh, here's another data point? Yeah, it's a fascinating question, and it speaks to the limitations of AI as we currently understand it. Right. Wolfram argues that true aha moments often involve breaking free from our existing assumptions, Why? looking at things from a completely new perspective. Right. And right now, AI is still very much bound by the data we feed it, by the frameworks we've created. So it's like AI is playing a game with rules that we've defined, 
while humans are constantly questioning the rules themselves. Exactly. Even coming up with entirely new games. Yeah, and that's not to say that AI can't be a valuable tool for pushing the boundaries of scientific discovery. Right. In fact, Wolfram highlights some really intriguing ways AI can be used to formalize scientific knowledge, making it more accessible and easier to build upon. Like, he talks about using computational language to represent things like chemical reactions. Exactly. Or even entire scientific models. Right. It's like creating a universal language for science that okay. AI can understand and manipulate. So by formalizing knowledge in this way, we're essentially creating a playground for AI to explore. Right. It's yeah. like we're giving AI all the building blocks. Right. And then just letting it loose to see what it can create. See what kind of structures it can build. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm starting to see how this could lead to some really interesting discoveries. Yeah. It's like AI becomes a partner in the scientific process, right? not just a tool. Precisely. And that brings us to Wolfram's vision for the future of science, a future where AI and this formal computational paradigm work in synergy, okay. each complementing the other's strength. So it's not about AI solving science, yeah. rather about AI and humans working together. Working together, yeah. To unlock new levels of understanding. Absolutely. We're better together. Like peanut butter and jelly. I like that analogy. It's a good one. Right. And I think it's an important point to emphasize. AI is a powerful tool, but it's not a replacement for human intuition creativity. Yeah. And that, you know, that insatiable desire to understand the world around us. And who knows what amazing discoveries we'll make together. Oh, right? exactly. I mean, maybe AI will help us finally unify quantum mechanics and general relativity. That would be something. Or discover life on another planet. Well, or maybe it'll help us solve some of the more, you know, pressing problems facing humanity like climate change or disease. Right, exactly. So many possibilities. The possibilities are truly endless. And I think that's what makes this such an exciting time to be involved in science. Yeah. We're on the cusp of a new era of discovery and AI is going to play a pivotal role. It really has been a wild ride exploring Wolfram's ideas today. It has. It feels like we've only just scratched the surface of what AI can do in the realm of science. We've only just begun to explore the tip of the iceberg, really. Right. But if there's one thing I hope our listeners take away from this deep dive, yeah. it's this. AI is a powerful tool, but it's up to us to decide how we use it. Okay. It's up to us to ask the interesting questions, to challenge assumptions, and to never stop exploring the mysteries of the universe. Beautifully said. And on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive. But keep those brains buzzing, listeners. Keep thinking. The quest for knowledge never ends. Until next time, stay curious.